God bless you. Thank you for being with us today. We are Abundant Grace Church. I'm Bishop Ramon de Maria, and I'm the senior pastor of the church. Welcome, all of you that are watching this by YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, over whatever outlet you choose to watch us over. Welcome, and God bless you. Today we will be preaching part three of the message series, The Greatest Election, from the book of Isaiah, chapter 55 and verse 11, which reads as follows, So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I send it. Let us pray. Father God, in Jesus' name, thank you for another day. Thank you for bringing us together once again. Thank you for bringing us together in love and faith. Father God, speak today through your servant. Let your word go forth. Let it go forth without reservation. Touch the lost today. Touch those that are hurting. Touch those that need a special word from you. Thank you, Father God, for your blessings today as we welcome the Holy Spirit into this service. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So as I said, today is part three, and we are dealing with the great election. And today we will be dealing with the doctrine of God's election. Now the doctrine of God's election is difficult to understand for most people, even mature Christians. But God has set many anointed people in a position to teach us all about election. See, we have apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers, theologians that teach us the word of God, that teach us so we can have understanding. Three examples are, first, unless Christians are privileged to sit under the ministry of a spirit-taught minister of God who represents the truth to them systematically, great pains and diligence are called for in the searching of the scriptures so that others may collect and arrange their scattered statements on this subject. God has people set in places, and a lot of things people try to search the scriptures for, and when they find things, they don't have the understanding because there's no one to teach them. The Holy Spirit has not given ministers a complete and orderly setting forth of the doctrine of election, but instead has given ministers of the gospel a little here and a little there. We will never completely understand the Word of God unless it's revealed to us through the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the one that reveals it to us. Second, in the acceptance of the doctrine of election, this represents a greater difficulty. For when the mind perceives what the scriptures reveal thereon, the heart is lacking to receive such a humbling and fresh, withering truth. A lot of people, they just can't put it together. When they hear about election, that God chooses you, that you don't choose God, but that he chose you from before the foundations of the world, it is mind-boggling to people. Especially those that have led a horrible life, a bad life. They wonder how God could love them and how God could save them. It is difficult. I'm, I still think about why did God save me? and not save others. Why did he elect me? Why have I become one of his chosen when others have not? How earnestly we all need to pray for God to subdue our enmity against him and our prejudice against his truth. We, at times, reject what God wants to say. We don't want to believe it because it seems so far-fetched to us. We cannot fully understand the love of God which comes through Christ Jesus. We can understand. We don't have the mentality. Our, our minds are finite, not infinite. And we don't understand a lot of things. This is where we have to depend on our faith. We have to walk by faith, believe by faith, and not by sight. Third, in a proclamation of it, my beloved, no novice is competent to present this subject in a scriptural perspective and proportions. Not just anybody can present this subject to anybody. God chooses special people to teach others about this most precious subject of election. My beloved, nevertheless, these difficulties should not discourage 
still less prevent us from an honest and serious effort to understand and heartily receive all that God has been pleased to reveal to us so far. Just because you don't understand some parts of Scripture, don't shut your mind off to the Word of God. Don't say, well, I will never understand it anyway. It is a growth process. It is a process where God gives you so much at a time. He only gives you what you are able to receive and no more. There has been multiple times in my life where I just did not understand what God was saying. I couldn't comprehend it until maybe two or three years later. We have times like that. There are times when we go through dry seasons where we just don't absorb anything from the Word of God. Then there are times where we flourish in the Word of God. So know that God has His time and His place and His purpose. Difficulties are designed to humble us. But we have difficulties in understanding what God wants to tell us. We are to be, let's say, humble and seek the truth of his word. Seek what he is trying to say. Seek others for help in understanding. At times I have to go to someone else or go to a book or read something or someone's commentary to get a better understanding of what God is saying through the scriptures. We are not exempt from doing that. None of us understands the Word of God 100%, and we never will. It's not easy to arrive at a clear and adequate grasp of any of the doctrines of Holy Scripture, and God never intended it to be that way. We will never know everything about God, because God only reveals to us what we can absorb. Truth must be bought. And there are few that are willing to pay the price for the prayerful study of the Word of God. People don't want to spend the time needed to learn about God and prayer and fasting. Nowadays, there's very little fasting going on. There's little prayer going on. People aren't receiving the Word of God. All they are doing is absorbing what the world wants to say through the news media. And they believe that rather than believe what the Word of God says. And what does the Word of God say? That He is in control of everything that takes place. So, if you are having a problem studying the Word of God, ask God for that desire to seek more of Him, to learn more about Him, and to do His complete will in your life. Don't waste time on newspapers and idle recreations. They won't help you in a day of judgment, in a day of hurting, in a day of uncertainty. Only the Word of God will give you that peace. Proverbs 23 and 23. Get for yourself that which is true, and do not let it go for money. Get wisdom and teaching and good sense. You can't buy and you can't sell the Word of God. Let me say that again. You can't buy and you can't sell the Word of God. It doesn't work. The Word of God is free for all of those that God chooses to reveal to them. God is the one that chooses who receives and who doesn't receive. As Christians, we are to invest in God's Word, in the evangelical truth, the Word of truth, the gospel of salvation. For this truth comes from God is brought to us through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who is truth, and all Scripture stems from this truth. As Christians, we ought to be led by the Spirit of truth, the whole matter of His truth, and this truth is to be presented in times of opposition. We must stand firm in this truth. No matter what the world is saying, the Word of God is going to prevail in all things. And when we look at our society today with false preachers, fictitious elements of what people are saying about the Word of God, the, the lies, people saying that abortion is right, homosexuality is right, 
sins of their flesh are right. Stand firm on the word of God. Stand firm on the commandments of God. Don't give in to what society says is right. To what society says is politically correct. Because it is wrong and it is leading people right to hell. And they are going gladly because the church is lacking in spreading the truth of the word of God. Amen. We must tell the truth. This pulpit will always speak the truth regardless of what the world is saying. This pulpit will never cease to tell the truth of the word of God. These shadowy preachers will answer to God in the day of judgment. Matter of fact, they will fall to their own folly. They will fall because they don't walk or speak in the truth of God. The true word of God calls us as Christians to respect the knowledge of one God consisting of three persons, Father, the Word, and the Spirit, or the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. One God, three persons, which we call the Godhead or the Trinity, the deity and the sonship of Jesus Christ, his incarnation and messiahship, salvation alone by him, through him. And that is the only way a sinner can be justified. And by his righteousness and his resurrection from the dead, through him and in him. So my beloved, that's what I'm going to close today. And why am I doing this series short? So you can understand them. I'm taking my time. I'm not running through this message because the doctrine of election is so very important. There are two elections. One election is the world's election. The most powerful one, the greatest one, is the election of God for people to spend eternity with him. No matter what election you are involved in, there's only one way to heaven, that's through Jesus Christ, and that is the election of God. If God called you, you went to the foot of the cross, you repented, you have eternal life with him in heaven. If you heard the word of God, you rejected the word of God, you received the word of the world, you will hear one day, depart from me, I never knew you. Go into the fires of eternal hell. Go with Satan, because that's the one that you serve. But when you receive Christ as your Savior and Lord, you go to heaven with Jesus Christ, the one that you have received as your Savior and Lord. If you want to do that today, I want to lead you in a prayer. Now, the prayer consists of believing that Jesus Christ is the Messiah, that he was born, crucified, died, buried, rose from the dead on the third day, and ascended into heaven, is now sitting at the right hand of God the Father. If you want to receive him today, you must repent of your sins. Accept his atoning sacrifice for sin, for your sin, for the sins of all mankind. Because remember, damnation fell upon the world when Adam and Eve sinned in the Garden of Paradise. And we are born sinners. And the only way to get to heaven is to repent from our sinfulness and to receive Jesus Christ as our Savior and Lord. As your Savior and Lord, if you are lost today. So won't you please pray this prayer with me and receive Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord. Let us pray. Father God, in Jesus' name, I heard the message today and it touched my heart. I am not part of God's elect, but I want to be. I want to be chosen. I want to go to heaven when I die. Therefore, you have opened the door for me. You have given me this opportunity to come to the cross. And I come today. I'm sorry for my sins. I repent of my sins. And I accept Jesus Christ as my Savior and Lord. I believe that he died on the cross for my sins. He was buried. He rose from the dead on the third day and ascended into heaven. He was now sitting at the right hand of God the Father in a place of power and majesty, from where he shall come to judge the dead and the living. I believe that today. I repent and confess Jesus Christ as my Savior and Lord. And I believe that through this, I have become a Christian. I have become part of God's elect, and I will be in heaven when I leave this life. And I thank you for saving me today. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. amen. My beloved, if you truly repented today, 
Let me be the first to welcome you into the kingdom of God. Now what I want you to do is go to a Bible preaching, teaching church. Get an audience with a pastor. Tell him what happened. Ask him to anoint you with oil, to pray with you, to pray for you. Also, ask him to baptize you by full immersion in water in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Ask him to mentor you, to give you a Bible if you haven't one, to teach you in the spirit of truth. Then, my beloved, what I would like you to do is email me and tell me about your conversion. You may email me at abundant.grace at att.net. You can also contact me through our website at www.abundantgracechurch.net or www.abundantgraceofmelothian.com. You can watch us on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, listen to us through our local radio stations here in Midlothian. You can also just Google me, Bishop Ramon Di Maria, or Abundant Grace Church of Midlothian. Thank you for being with us today. This has been part three of, of our message series titled, The Greatest Election. And the greatest election is the election of God. God bless you, and thank you for being with us. And please, let me hear from you at Abundant.grace at att.net. God bless you, and go with God.